Have you ever wondered what separates an amateur film from a blockbuster masterpiece? Some will lie to you and tell you it's about the story or the emotional performance or the artistic vision of the creator, but really, the only thing that matters is did they shoot it with a techno crane? Techno cranes can do it all. Dolly shots, jib shots, get super low, top down, lock offs, push, pull, you name it, all while looking badass. But if I were to buy one, Carrie would punch me in the mouth for ruining our financial future, so I've been on a mission to get techno crane results on a budget. So I stumbled across this thing and it has zero reviews, but it looks like it boom pans and most importantly, it telescopes. Now I know 3,200 bucks doesn't sound like a budget tool, but considering techno cranes start at six figures and go up from there, it's like trying to buy a new Ferrari with a budget of a 22 year old Corolla. Now for camera pan and tilt, the old school way was to have people operate at the end of the crane, but I don't think we're gonna have much luck doing that. So that's where our sponsor DJI comes in. We'll be putting the RS3 Pro at the tip of it to get that stabilized three axis gimbal control, which we can operate wirelessly. Slap it all together and see if it becomes the magical piece of equipment that I've always dreamed of, or is it just a janky piece of gear that belongs in the dumpster. Here it is, a, a budget techno crane. My favorite thing is when it goes through things. So like when it goes through a bunch of windows, like in a, in a train or something. They're also over a hundred grand. Uh, some houses, not anymore after inflation, but yeah, that's true. before you were able in to. In Mexico, there's some houses in Mexico. <laughs> yeah. Ta-da. Oh, this is actually pretty heavy. Let's go up. Got it, you got it? Yeah, I got oh. it. I feel like one of us is gonna get our finger pinched at some point. <laughs> then we have this, which I'm assuming goes through it. Oh wait, okay. So this comes off. <laughs> Good thing we checked the manual actually. Sometimes the manual helps. Oh, and then we feed it down this way. Coming straight down. So now it is very front heavy. This probably goes like that. We put the weights on. Oh, but the weights are not included. We should just put some sandbags. Oh, is that a bucket of paint? What could possibly go wrong? Honestly, it's working. We just need a little bit more. And an aperture bag. Forward reverse in the direction. Ooh. Where does this look like it would plug in? Oh yeah, right here. Remote out. And we're gonna plug stuff in. We're gonna need a battery, so. Yeah, V-mount. Oh, oh. Oh, it's doing stuff. Oh, look at that. Whoa, okay, that's Whoa. exciting. This is cool, <laughs> dude. It is getting excited. <laughs> dude. It just keeps going. That's Dang. so wild. <laughs> oh <shit. laughs> You need like a giant boxing glove right here, like in Looney Tunes. Dude, it just keeps going. Oh my god, this is scary. We gotta hang a gimbal at the end of it, and then you can literally place the camera wherever. It's kind of cool because it's like you almost have like drone like control, but from the ground, you know? There's some cartoony shit right here. I could go this slow, I could go a little bit faster, or I could go top speed right here. We're gonna use this to make the oh, ultimate yeah. Distrito coffee commercial. Yeah. <laughs> well, you don't realize how much 17 feet is until you extend it out and it just keeps going. It's like, whoa. So now we got a gimbal and a camera and some wireless transmissions. So about 50 pounds worth of weight. Oh, I need to work out. <laughs> so I've went ahead and attached one of these things on here so that the RS3 gimbal can fit right on. Go ahead and throw on the A7 with wide angle lens here. Oh, I guess we need to put a little bit more weight on the other side now. So how's this? Oh, that's uh, pretty close. One more. Now this is a lot of weight though. You do not want this thing tipping over. 75 pounds just back here, plus the weight of the jib. So basically we need to send a video feed from up here to the camera operator back here. So they basically say you can feed HDMI cables through here, but I think we're just gonna go all wirelessly if we can. So this is DJI's transmission. Power the transmitter off of the gimbal. And we'll also send the HDMI out of the camera into the transmission. All right, we're gonna go ahead and power the gimbal I wish there was a good easy quarter 20 mount up here or something, but I don't really see anything. Bongo tie this thing on for now. There's our feed right here. And then also gimbal control, just like that. Oh, easy. I'm ready for my close up. Oh. <laughs> now getting good shots out of this thing definitely takes a bit of practice. It kind of reminds me of the Inspire where the cam op and pilot needs to be perfectly in sync. So lots of communication needed, but after playing with it for a bit, we were starting to get the hang of it. I always love experimenting with these new tools because it opens up my mind to new possibilities and unique shots that I can now get. But it's also important to know exactly what the limitations are before you take it out on a shoot. For example, the telescoping is pretty slow. So you can't really use it to push or pull someone that's walking towards the camera. Oh, well, I guess you could just do kind of something like this where it's just swinging it. I think I could actually do gyroscopic control. So then it should mimic <laughs> what I'm doing here. Down, yeah. up. We can use this to help cats get down. You know what I mean? <laughs> I just love how easy it is to move the camera around. Anytime we're like, okay, let's set up for the next shot. I could be like, all right, I'm going to come over here and get your hands. All right, now we're going in for the overhead shot. You know, we can just like switch in seconds. That's really cool. I feel like one of the big downsides of this though is that the amount of weight you need to counterbalance this thing, it changes depending on how far out it is. So right now it's a little bit back heavy, 
but then if I push it out a little bit further, then it becomes front heavy, right? So I have to push down on it. So next I wanted to take this and show some friends over at Colorblind. They're a creative agency that regularly uses techno cranes for their shoots, but the craziest coincidence, they got the same one. Literally set ours up the same day you guys did yeah, too. Super random. Ape sent a text saying that you just got one and I sent him a photo of it in the box. <laughs> I was gonna say, hey, just return ours. We could use jeans for free. But well, now we got two, so we could like battle. This is a cool set though. You guys built this? Yeah, Harley helped us. Are these all working tools and everything? Yeah, labeled and everything. Wow. Okay, so you guys got the new controller. So you can like adjust the speed here. Oh, and dampening. And you guys just tape their battery up here. We'll clean it up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, ours has the we, bongo tie, we, so we don't worry. Did. Now the main thing I wanted to know is can this Jeep get shots that are comparable to what they were getting with the Techno Crane? It's that shot right there. That orange one. So that was with the Techno Crane. It takes so long to move that thing. The Techno Crane? Yeah, because we would have the Techno Crane. It was 35 foot, we'd have it set up and like we couldn't move the bike sometimes or like the bike was like centered on the turntable. Just to move it a couple inches was like, it was a huge pain. You guys use the 35 foot techno crane yeah. for the two feet of well, motion in the video. <laughs> like, <laughs> well, we did, we did a couple shots that were like two bike reveals. Uh -huh. And once you're paying them to transport it and the two guys to set it up, it's not that much difference if you pay them for the 20 foot, the 35 or the 50. I don't wanna spend 10 grand and have like this short one. Now to operate the camera gimbal, we were experimenting with the PlayStation controller, which is compatible with the RS3. Tilta also makes a wireless option. And of course I was using the DJI transmission side handle earlier, but I think what we all really want is like a pro controller that we can use for the RS3 Pro. Now DJI does make one, but it's only compatible with the high end Ronin 2. Would love to see something like this come in for the RS3. Currently, if I'm trying to get that fine controller, Control. I got this crossfire module, which will allow me to use my FPV controllers, but it's not necessarily the most intuitive thing to set up. And I guess you can also use the master wheels and send that through the DJI transmission, but that's also kind of uh, expensive. After a bit of testing, I think it's safe to say this isn't replacing techno cranes anytime soon. I mean, it's just a different level of build quality, the speed, the payload capacity. But if the shots you're going for are within the limitations of this crane, it seems like it can pull it off pretty decently. Because of the weight shift, I feel like it's a little bit difficult to have it perfectly level all the way throughout. There's almost a little bit of that bobble that it wants to do because you have to consistently give it some input. To shoulder press it up. <laughs> it wasn't that much more than a jib. It's yeah. like a regular jib that doesn't go in and out. Yeah. So this part of the episode is where we do our budget techno crane versus a drone, except for we don't have our budget techno crane. <laughs> Sad story, actually. Driving out here to Vegas in the van, van broke down, started smoking, and just completely lost power in the middle of the freeway. Steam coming off there. I think we lost a fuel line or something. But anyways, the van is in service, and the jib is just way too big to fit in the sedans. But the show must go on, so we basically are going to be trying to get these shots with the Air 3. So the back of your bike is a launch pad. Yeah. <laughs> Beauty with the Air 3 is that we have two lenses, so a 1X lens and a 3X lens. It is crazy how much easier this is to set up than the Jib. With the Jib, I could do some pretty good top-down shots, but here I could get 400 feet. Probably more of a practical tool for most users, but of course there are times where you just cannot have the sound of the drone. Indiana Justin, right? Indiana that's, that's, Justin. Your, that's your title officially. Now. Justin went and took this thing to some of the highest roads in the world. It's probably pretty crazy to take the motorcycles up there. Yeah, well, I almost died. <laughs> but it was really cool that this thing was able to fly at that altitude. I think this is the highest you can go unless you have to inspire with the high altitude propellers and you go a little bit pitch. higher. Taking it around on your saddlebags? Yeah. Film equipment's worst nightmare. You're like in this hard box, just the whole way. How much film equipment do you destroy? <laughs> First thing that's happened in here is that the 70 to 200 rattled to pieces. Oh, it just rattled totally to pieces? came apart and I had to send it in. You're trying to ride and film yourself, which is tough. I got this bad boy. So now it just sits on my handlebar. Ride through, right? And then as soon as I see that I'm out of the shot, I just reframe again and I can get multiple shots. Definitely in. kind of a pain in the ass to like park the bike and then get off and oh, then set up the, the camera, hit record, ride go through back. it. And oh, you gotta go back, back then ride, ride through, through it, then, then go come back, back and then pick up your stuff. Exactly. And then here you can kind of leapfrog it. And again, now with yeah. 30, 40 minutes, battery life it's like actually feasible yeah sure you don't want to film your vlogs on a techno crane i mean let's, <laughs> let's try it's the <laughs> ultimate selfie stick you need 
as much equipment as possible in the smallest amount of space, right? Smallest amount of space because we also are taking the equipment for camping and sleeping. Only yeah. so much room we have for gear. I bring camera gear, no clothes. No clothes? Only, <laughs> all this, these are the only clothes I have. I'm still bummed that we had to leave the van and crane behind, but on the bright side, we were able to imitate a majority of the shots we were trying to get with the crane anyways. The Air 3 is such an awesome road trip drone, but of course there's big advantages to the crane as well. You don't have to worry about no fly zones, it doesn't make any sound, and you also have a ton of different camera and lens options that you could throw on there too. And I must say the first time we used it, the results were dreamy. Oh yeah, that looks clean, dog. Oh man, this actually looks too <laughs> legit. I'm actually surprised at how good it looked. <laughs> this is definitely one of those things that you don't want to set up on your own. I would say three people, right? Would you say? Yeah, I think that's the magic number. Three people. While we have it set up, there's been a few times where this leg almost popped out, which is super sketchy. So we're going to fasten it down. Luckily, the legs have this thing here to help it stay in. I think this is going to draw a lot of attention to Dylan. And people are going to be like, is that Brad Pitt? It's a knockoff Filipino version, you know, the cheaper one. How hard is it to operate this thing? As a jib, pretty simple. As a techno crane, it's very difficult. The back starts moving forward and the same thing on reverse, it'll start moving back and you actually have to physically step back and that causes a little bit of wobbliness. So as you telescope out, not only does the balance of the crane shift around, but you also have to take a step as the operator. So that definitely adds to the trickiness of trying to get a super fluid shot. So comparing this to the legit techno cranes that has a counterbalance system that slides, those maintain perfect balance throughout the whole range. Beauty of that is even if you're telescoped all the way out to 75 feet or pulled all the way back in, the camera will just float there and you can move the entire rig with just one hand. And you could also see that the counterbalance system is within the crane. So the operator does necessarily have to adjust depending on how telescoped out it is. So we are reunited with the van. I will say it was still pretty sketchy how it broke down on the middle of the freeway. Terry was driving, check engine light came on and then we literally lost all power to the van and she was able to go all the way from the leftmost lane all the way to the right. As suspected, it was the fuel line, but luckily everything was covered under warranty. We're back here at the coffee shop and oh, look who showed up. Ah, what are you up to here? Are you, uh, oh, almost died. Let's there get onto the, the sidewalk, side. yeah. Camp setup. Oh, it's a little tight. Yeah. Like, actually, my... this is pretty comfortable. Yeah. This is for people who can't afford one of those. <laughs> you know this broke down on us? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> only 40,000 miles. Toyotas never break, huh? Old Toyotas. Old Toyotas never break. We're filming with a techno crane today. You know what those are? No, but it sounds fun. All right, so let's get to the bottom of this. First of all, is this thing cool? I would say, yeah, because it opens up more possibilities on shots that I can get in this budget range. I really like how easy it is to move the camera around in a three-dimensional space like that. We were able to get away with just the two of us operating. Sam would operate the crane and I would operate the camera gimbal while utilizing the autofocus. But of course, if there was a third person that could full focus, that's ideal. Now, as much fun as we're having with this thing, there is a red flag. So the crane itself is about 73 pounds. And for our setup, I needed about 75 pounds of counterweight. And then there's the weight of the camera and gimbal. So in total, we're looking at over 150 pounds that sits on the stand. So with that in mind, it makes me very uncomfortable that all this weight is attached to the tripod with this little screw and not even the whole screw, just the tip. And that's for my tiny A7 setup, but they claim a 15 kilogram max payload capacity. And according to their math, it sums up to 124 and a half kilograms, which converts to 275 pounds. Me personally, I can't recommend you take almost 300 pounds of metal and sending it 17 feet above a crowd of people. And the only thing stopping it from whipping down is the tip of this little screw. I mean, sure, for the most part, the center of gravity should be on the center of the tripod, but this is a piece that gets removed and reattached every time it gets packed away. So it is constantly getting cranked in and out. So how long until it gets stripped? Now, I'm not quite sure if I'm just overreacting. So I wanted to ask a friend who builds camera support systems. Not gonna lie, like that stuff's so <laughs> unsafe, man. It's so unsafe. They copy everybody's things badly. Like they've copied my, my products before. And I looked at it and I'm like, they didn't think this through. I have patents, five patents on my products, you know, family run business, tons of work to get it done right. That's just me. I mean, I'm obviously biased, <laughs> I'm always biased. But you know what? I stand behind what I do. We care so much to make sure our products are good because if you're on set, right? If your kit fails, like we know that that's your career and all this stuff has to be bulletproof. Hey, Pro-Am, if you're out there, I challenge you to a duel, man. Like, come on, let's go, old school. I mean, we'll sign some papers. I did end up getting pinched by this thing, but that was my fault. It was before I started strapping the tripod onto the wheels and learned that lesson real fast. But if you operate this thing safely and properly, the 17 foot reach is really impressive to have. You do have to count for the 20 to 30 minutes to set it up. But once you are set up, you can go from a jib shot to a tripod shot to a slider shot, all 10 feet apart from each other. And that switch up only takes seconds. So in the right circumstances, it could actually be a super efficient tool. The whole crane is powered off one V 
mount battery, which lasts for hours. It is worth noting that the tripod and wheels are sold separately, and those are essential to maneuver the crane around, and then you can lock the wheels down when you're in position. I definitely do wish there was a way to telescope the arm out faster, but I do think that for slow and smooth studio stuff, this can be useful. And at first I was thinking that this would be a really useful tool for event coverage or maybe weddings, but I just don't know if I trust this thing enough to send this over a crowd of people. So it does have some shortcomings and it is a bit janky, but it definitely can deliver incredible results as long as you work within the limitations and you operate it safely. But that pretty much wraps it up for the year 2023. 2024 should be an awesome one. We're kicking it off with an episode with Claudio Miranda, Oscar winning cinematographer for Life of Pi and just shot Top Gun. Kind of a big deal, you know? Don't worry, I didn't go out there and make a fool out of myself. I should probably actually say, shave this now. I hope oh, this, yeah. Uh, yeah, hope you don't mind. I'm just, uh, you know, just should only take a, how's it looking down, Mr. Spot? You did, a lot of missed spots. What, you guys are the one that told me to shave it. So yeah, see you guys uh, next year. Bye.